I do 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 do. Signal processing is all about that. I can't understand anything. The noise is too loud. Can we turn this off for a second? Okay, great. Welcome. Today we want to introduce you to one of the most important signal processing techniques: beamforming, also known as spatial filtering. This is a typical problem in hands-free applications such as when using mobile devices, hearing aids, or radar processing. Generally, any scenario where multiple sensors are used to capture signals. The fundamental idea behind beamforming is to maintain the source from a specified direction and suppress unwanted interference. How can we do this? We start with the desired source and a noise source, captured by a linear microphone array. The sound from the desired source and the noise will reach the individual microphones at different times. The first microphone will capture the desired source sound long before the noise sound reaches the microphone. For the second and third microphone, the path lengths are similar such that the two sounds reach the microphones almost at the same time. Contrarily to the first one, the last microphone will capture the noise early and the desired source sample with quite some delay. Note that in this example the source and the noise are symmetrically positioned towards the microphone array. Of course this can be different, depending on the setup you use. Nevertheless, if we were able to shift the microphone signals by a runtime difference, such that the desired source signals align, we could come up with an undistorted source signal, while the noise signals are suppressed. We usually say that the source signals are in phase, whereas the noise signals are out of phase. After the alignment, we add the four signals up. We then divide by the number of microphones such that the loudness of the source signal is kept. You can see that the source signal is the original one, while the noise signals are lowered in amplitude and are therefore suppressed. Wow, we just designed our first beamformer the delay and some beamformer. But wait, where is the math? So far, we considered that we already know by how much the signals need to be shifted. However, we want to be able to calculate the time differences in a systematic way. This is where the math happens. Here, we assume that we know the location of the source. The angle theta between the array and the vector pointing in the direction of the source is usually called the direction of arrival, the DOA. If the source is close to the microphone array, located in the near field, the DOA will be different for each of the microphones. For practical reasons, we usually assume the source to be in the far field, meaning that the wave captured by the microphone array can be approximated by a plane wave. Therefore, the angle theta will be the same for all the microphones, in reality, the wave will not be exactly plain, but slightly curved. However, the far-field model works sufficiently well in most cases. Usually we want the signal captured by the first microphone to be the reference signal. But you can also use any other microphone or point on the microphone array as a reference. In our case, with the first microphone as a reference, we will not shift the signal of the first microphone and therefore the time difference of arrival will be zero. Now we would like to align the signal reaching the second microphone based on the reference signal. The plane wave reaching the second microphone and the vector pointing from the first microphone to the source build a right-angled triangle. Assume we know the angle theta and the distance between the two microphones. We can now use trigonometric functions to calculate the difference in path length between the first and the second microphone. As you might remember from physics, we can compute a time difference by dividing the distance by the speed of sound c. We can now use this formula to compute how much we need to shift the signal reaching the second microphone to align with the one captured by the first one. This can be done for all the microphones in the array, However, the size of the right angle triangle will increase the further we move away from the reference microphone. We can account for this in our formula by multiplying the distance d by a factor of 2 
for the third microphone. Because we are using a uniform linear array, the distance between the microphones is the same for all microphones in the array. The same needs to be done for the fourth and last microphone by applying a factor of 3. I'm sure you can see a pattern here. We can express those factors mathematically by adding n to our time difference of arrival equation. It doesn't matter if your microphone array now consists of 4 microphones or 40 microphones. You can simply shift the signals according to the formula we just found. Signal processing is all about math. Such a relief to only hear the desired sound of the source. Except from listening to the output, is there another way to make sure our beamformer works well? The most important design criteria is the spatial response or the beam pattern. Let's look at it in more detail. We again take a uniform linear microphone array with an equal spacing, which captures a source signal with a DOA of 60 degree. More specifically, the beam former is steered towards 60 degrees. Instead of only 4 microphones, imagine the array to consist of 32 microphones, all of them separated by 0.035 meters. The spatial response is now given in decibel and plotted over the angle. A value of 0 decibel indicates that the signal coming from this direction is not suppressed, while negative values indicate a stronger attenuation. Let's see how it looks like for the current array configuration. You can assume an imaginary sound source running from 0 to 180 degrees around the array and checking the degree of suppression while the source and therefore the steering angle stay the same. You can see that the amplitude is quite low for signals coming from other directions than the source direction. This is good. Our beamformer performs well, suppressing the noise from other directions. Only for 60 degree, we can see that the amplitude reaches 0 decibel, which means that the source signal is maintained. We call this the main lobe, while the others are called side lobes. The number of side lobes depends on the number of microphones in the array. But this is topic for another video here. It is important to note that the spatial response does not only depend on the angle, but also on the frequency of the sound released by our imaginary sound source. The green graph shows another spatial response for a higher frequency than the one of the orange graph. Again we can see the main lobe at 60 degrees. But what is that? Close to 160 degrees. It seems that there is a secondary main lobe. In signal processing we call this a grating lobe. It means that a sound with this frequency, coming from roughly 160 degrees, will not be suppressed but fully captured by the microphone. This is awful. In such a case our beamformer performs poorly. This will be even worse if we increase the frequency further, leading to the red graph. Here you can see not only one, but two grating lobes. As the spatial response is dependent on frequency and angle, wouldn't it be cool to have a plot that can show both at the same time? This is the beam pattern. The beam pattern shows again the angle on the x-axis, but this time the frequencies are shown on the y-axis and the amplitude is color-coded. Yellow refers to 0 decibel, while darker colors refer to negative amplitude values. You can clearly see the main lobe at 60 degree, indicated by the yellow color over all frequencies. However, while for lower frequencies no grating lobes are visible, we can see another yellow area in the upper right of the beam pattern. Here, for higher frequencies, grating lobes appear at different angles. Spatial aliasing, as we call the effect, as well as advanced beamforming techniques will be covered in upcoming videos, so stay tuned! Today, you've learned about one of the fundamental beamforming techniques, the delay and some beamformer, and the most important design criteria, the beam pattern. However, as you've already experienced today, its performance is limited and it's an ongoing challenge to improve the design of the microphone arrays as well as the beamforming algorithms. You can see that there is so much more to discover in the world of audio. 
See you soon as we continue our journey.